harbor was already history. U.S. Marines had clawed their way onto Guadalcanal, and American soldiers were settling in North Africa before that ship was ready for sea late in 1943. This is the story of that ship and the men who sailed her to the battered beaches of the Pacific in World War II. This is the way it was. Dave, are you sure you won't get another night off the ship? No. I'll write every day. So will I. Bye, darling. Bye. Sailing on her, Captain? Wrong rank, old timer. I'm a lieutenant. Well, wasn't you Captain of the Romer? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Last time I seen you around San Francisco was on the bridge of the Romer when she was in Samson's dry dock over to Alameda. Well, you seen him launch this ship eight, nine months ago. That's right. Launched and towed away for outfitting. I wondered then what she was going to be. Now you're sailing her off to war, huh? No, not quite. I'm not the captain of this ship. Why is that? I was a captain of the Merchant Marine. I had to give up two stripes to get into the Navy. I... did it because... I know. I wish they'd let me sail on her. I helped build a Belinda. She's still talking. Don't laugh, boy. She was talking all the time we was building her. She's still talking. Come here. Listen to her. Those sounds. They're just locked in stresses working out. They come out slowly in a part welded hull. I know, I know. Each part's trying to be free again. They'll settle together. She's a good ship. A fortunate ship. She'll go far. And she'll come home again. The latest scuttlebutt is our captain scheduled to finally show up at noon tomorrow. 1200. Oh, I'll never get used to Navy time. Anyway, his name is Hawks. Captain J.S. Hawks. I saw it on his baggage when it was brought aboard. Would you know him, sir? No. Mr. Fraser says he's seen plenty of action in both the Atlantic and the Pacific. He even won a Navy cross at Guadalcanal. Then he's seen some more. Yes, sir. Academy man, naturally. Naturally. Well, good night, Mr. Kruger. Good night, sir. I'm sure relieved we're getting at least one more officer aboard who's had a lot of sea experience. I didn't mean me, sir. I mean, besides you. I mean his captain, sir. Yes, Mr. Kruger.
I mean zero three hundred. Another hour of this. You know, getting the mid watches for the birds. Yes, sir. Owls. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Jebediah S. Hawks, I request permission to come aboard, sir. Permission granted. Yes, sir. What's your name, mister? Kruger, sir. Boat group. Kruger. California's gonna miss you at quarterback next fall, son. Mr. Kruger, all officers not on watch will assemble in the wardroom in five minutes, where I'll take command of the ship. Aye, aye, sir. Yes, sir. And the assistant boat group commander, Lieutenant Sherwood. How do you do, Captain? Mr. Sherwood adds a touch of culture to the ship, Captain. He was a literature instructor at Yale. Princeton, Commander Quigley. I'm Dr. Flynn, senior surgeon, sir. Doctor? Dr. Bell and Dr. Gates. Dr. Bell, Dr. Gates. I'm very impressed with the civilian background of my medical officers. Looking forward to catching something that'll require treatment. <laughs> I doubt that you'll have much opportunity to practice your specialty, Dr. Gates. Obstetrics, wasn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> and your first lieutenant, sir, Mr. Fraser. Considering your experience, Mr. Fraser, I expect to have the best deck department in the fleet. Thank you, Captain. And the signal and recognition officer, Ensign Twitchell. I intend to do my best for you, sir, and your executive officer. Well, let's hope it'll be good enough. And your boat group commander, Lieutenant McDougall. I'm gratified you were assigned to my ship. Glad to be aboard, sir. Please sit down, gentlemen. So lacking in dignity. I mean, it's casual popping aboard at three in the morning. Or not some kind of an impressive ceremony. Just blues and all that. Or something. Gentlemen, we have a new ship. With the exception of our chiefs, we also have an almost totally inexperienced crew. When I speak of you as being without experience, I don't mean it as a criticism. It's a situation our country has always found itself in when war is suddenly thrust upon her. Failing to remember the past, we seem doomed to repeat it. Therefore, we have no choice except to make the most with what we have and pray that it's enough. How you as individuals will weather the months or years that lie ahead is an imponderable. But this ship is not. The Belinda is an attack transport, largest of all amphibious types. The attack transport's main battery, unfortunately, is not her guns. It's her boats. The singular duty of this ship is to carry a combat-loaded battalion landing team of some 1,400 officers and men and land them together with all necessary equipment right in the laps of the enemy. You are going to learn how to accomplish this. Easily, I hope. Or, if you prefer, as painfully as you wish. <laughs> Commander Quigley, is the Belinda ready for sea? Um, yes, sir. Very good. The Belinda will get underway for a shakedown cruise at 0630. Destination is Pearl Harbor. Good morning, gentlemen. Carry on. And you, Mr. O'Banion, are my beachmaster. Yes, sir. Well, you see, sir, I was sleeping, and as long as I wasn't on duty, Mr. I... Mr. O'Banion, on my ship, every officer's on duty 24 hours a day. Yes, sir. Old shipmate told me about him. He was skipper of a destroyer that was sunk in the Battle of Santa Cruz Islands when the Japs were trying to take Guadalcanal back. He kept that can's guns fire until she went under the water. He didn't get that Navy cross sitting on his bucket in Washington. Down snug. 
BP's way over eight ton, you know. We can't have no eight ton boats banging around loose on deck. Deck all secure and gripes and tight, like I done. Hey, what's all the noise? Uh, what are you doing up there? Just making everything ship shape, sir. All done here, sir. Chief. You carry on here, Steve. See that our part of the ship's secure. Aye, aye, sir. What, uh... His name's Riley, sir. One of the motor max. He lives up to the nickname he's already earned. He's open off up there. Men call him sack time. It's Mr. Jackson's first day at sea. I know I'd appreciate some help from experienced hands. Come below with me. But that supply department business, sir, it's not your. Well, if you say so, Mr. McDougal. Mr. O'Brien. Yes, sir. All the course, 90 degrees to starboard. Aye, aye, sir. All right, Chief, you may dismiss them. Shove off. Wax in the deck. Somebody's gonna now, get... Moran, I don't want to hear any more complaints about my insisting on having the mess deck wax. Yes, sir. It makes for greater cleanliness. I made a study of feeding crowds of men while I was stationed at Treasure Island. A scientific study. Now, you see how scientifically everything is arranged? The men will leave steam tables, get drinks here, then move to mess tables, then to the... Oh, oh. Very scientific. What idiot waxed this deck? Oh, you win, Chief. Never again. Oh, that's all right, sir. Mm -hmm. Need any help, Mr. Jackson? My storerooms, they, they must be a wreck. And the galley. Galley ship shape, sir. Mm, smells like we're having roast pork and sweet potatoes for dinner. <laughs> Clean it up, Chief. And when you break out new gear, nail it down. I won't tell you how. You know more about this stuff than I do. Mm -hmm. Do you hear there? This is the captain. Before the Belinda was cast off from the pier this morning, it was reported to me that the ship was, in all respects, ready for sea. There now remains any doubt whatsoever that this report was over-optimistic. I'll be pleased to remain on this course a little longer. Teach it on the hard way. That's a very dirty trick to do to anybody. Mm. Mr. O'Banion? Only it costs 90 degrees to port. Aye, aye, sir. Well, is his sick bay in good health or his major surgery indicated? Oh, some bottles got smashed. It smells pretty strong in there. I was telling Doc he ought to smell the rest of the ship. Not so antiseptic. You know, I bet if you could get them on their feet long enough to count them, 70% of this crew is sick from that rolling. <laughs> well, it's better to have them get seasick now and get it over with than later on when we might need all hands in an emergency. I have a hunch our captain knows his business. Which no one can say for our executive officer. Get this wardroom cleaned up right away, will you? This is most unappetizing. Aye, aye, sir. Ah, coffee. Never-ending supply of hot coffee. Great inducement for any man to enlist in the Navy. Well, the weather was quite rough for a while, wasn't it? It was? Very. It even woke me up. You were asleep? Yes. After all, there was nothing to do. Night orders are signed, sir. Very well. 
For some time to come, I'll permit only you, Mr. Randall, Mr. O'Banion, and Mr. Fraser to stand top watches. Now, the only officers aboard who see experience qualifies you for such duty. Yes, sir. I'm not unaware of the sacrifice you made in both rank and salary when you came into the Navy. But for your own peace of mind, I'd suggest you try to forget that you were recently captain and master of a ship in the Merchant Marine. Adjust to the fact that I am captain of the Belinda. I'll be in my sea cabin. Porthole will be open. You can talk to me anytime. I'll be awake. Target plane approaching. This run is for port side guns only. Repeat, port side guns only. You're firing! Get on it, Target! Get on it! I say, and give thanks that that was only a 30-foot piece of canvas instead of an enemy bomber. I've seen 10-year-old kids shoot better with slingshots. Well, at least they look like sailors. Belinda's the smartest looking ship to enter and leave Pearl in many a month. Smart looking ship is a credit to itself and a credit to the Navy. War is no excuse for aping the appearance of a river coal barge. Gangway's clear, sir. Handlers are ready to cast off lines. Very good. What is that? Don't go bring that man up here to me. Aye, right, sir. Stand by all lines. Sailor. Yes, sir. The captain wants to see you on the bridge. Say, that's right nice of him. I've never been up there before. Follow me. Back one third. Back one third, sir. Ease your rudder to standard. Ease your rudder to standard. Hey, fellas, look at me up here in officer's country. Oh, hi. Mr. McDougall, take the con. Aye, uh, sir. What is your name and your division? I'm Gilbert Huber from Tennessee. Um, Tennessee, yes, but what division on the Belinda? What are your duties? Oh, uh, first division. I'm the garbage grinder. That's one of the importantest places on the whole ship, you know? I grind up all the garbage and mix it with water, you see? Then it runs into the ocean and mixes all up with it. So no Jap submarine can find us. Like the can of them mess cooks dump it overboard like they want to, you see? I see. But you... you should keep cleaner. Oh, I keep that place clean, Captain. You want to come down to the garbage grinding room and see for yourself? I dare you to find a speck of dirt. The only trouble is the chicken guts. Chicken guts? Yeah, they jam up them gears. Them and them mess cooks leaving forks in the garbage. Why, Captain, just this Commander morning... Quigley. I... Sir? See that this man gets cleaned up and into the prescribed uniform of the day. Yes, sir. Sure a nice place you got up here, Captain. You come visit me anytime you feel like it. I'll show you around. Oh, well, I'll see you.
in guts. <laughs> Port boats will proceed aft a hundred yards and circle counterclockwise. The starboard boats will circle clockwise, like so. This pattern is to avoid boats colliding head on. In collision, they'll just glance off one another. If all our coxswains can remember left and right. Yeah, I've got a couple. Well, take the hands you want them to remember and dip it in paint. Now, let's get on with it. Once the boats have formed their circles, they'll be called alongside by number. They look like a bunch of lady drivers on Dollar Day. <laughs> Take it easy, there! Well, sir, it took some doing, but we finally got our boats away. Yes, you got them away in exactly one hour and 43 minutes. What are you waiting around for, McDougal? A well done? They're all here, sir. Rehearsals from now on will be with troops. Please do not drown them. They are needed for future commitments to battle. Second Division, stand by to receive boats along starboard side. Boat 19 to white 3. Boat 11 to red 1. All boats away in 35 minutes, Captain. That's the best time yet, sir. It's not good enough. Okay, Roger and out. Another boat approach, too, sir. What? Oh, when are those coxswains ever going to learn? Plywood, you smash him to a stack of kindling. Boats ain't no good on a beat, sailor. Get this bulldozer out of here. I don't take no orders from you, Mac. I take my orders from Sergeant Kelly. Hold it. What's going on here? Ah, this idiot's trying to wreck my boats. You don't need a force marine cooperation on the Navy, Corporal. Sergeant Kelly says... This is the Navy Beachmaster you're arguing with. He's in charge of everything up to the high water mark where I take over. Now get your bulldozer out of here. As for you, O'Banion, either keep your shirt on so my men will know you're an officer, or get your rank tattooed on your chest. Commando! What's the matter? Lost our rider! Back her down. Hello, Captain. Duel. I'm delighted you've chosen to remain aboard the Belinda rather than let our good doctor ship you off to some shore hospital. I'll be fine here, sir. Just fine. I'm sure of it. I wish I could be as sure of other matters. You've been a skipper. You understand what I mean. You know I'm without any help at all on the bridge. Quickly is, well, he's exec in name only. 
With few exceptions, we were officered by men who spent three weeks fitting their uniforms and one hour reading the manual. Suppose something happens to me as it has to you. What happens to the Belinda? They'll learn, sir. Of course. But the enemy won't wait. McDougall, I'm glad you had this accident. Now I can use you to my benefit and the benefit of the ship. I don't understand, sir. What's your opinion of Steve Sherwood? Do you consider him capable? I couldn't get along without him, sir. He's a natural leader, natural in the boats. Excellent. I'm making Sherwood boat group commander. You'll then have time to train new officers of the deck and keep an eye out for me. Well, but I'll be well by the time we... I'll be practical, man. It'll be months before you can climb nets. It'll be several weeks before you can even walk again. I don't want to lose command of my boats. We all want things our own way. I wanted command of a cruiser instead of this. Well, the Belinda's going to get me that cruiser by being the top APA in the fleet. And to make her that, I need a real sailor man on the bridge with me. And that's where you come in, mister. For your information, we're all through with dry runs. Next time we hoist out boats, it'll be in enemy waters. Tracks a line of departure, sir. Boat 17 to green 5. Boat 17 to blue 6. Boat 10, Barahan getting alongside at yellow 8. Boat 11 to red 2. Amtrak's on beach, sir. All right, Willie, let's take Macon. Thirty-three minutes to hoist our own boats. It's better time than I thought we'd make on our first combat. Not tolerate complacency on my ship. We have to stow the tank lighters on number five hatch, sir. They'll always be the controlling factors. In... I am the controlling factor aboard the Belinda. My ship's going to set speed records every time she goes into action. The Belinda's going to be the most efficient APA in the Pacific Fleet. Is that clear, Mr. McDougall? Yes, sir.
this man into a boat and send him back to the Belinda. Flagship calling, sir. Oh, answering. Queen Bee, this is Tango. Go ahead, over. Tango, this is Queen Bee. You are forward of your area. Put ship back on station immediately. Repeat. You are forward of your area. Put ship back on station immediately. Over. Queen Bee, this is Tango. Welcome, Al. Ship back on station. Wait 20 minutes and then crowd our area to the limit. We want to continue to reduce the running time for the boats to and from the beach. Sir? I don't believe that's Bosky, sir. I can read his flags like a book. Tell him to repeat again. I can't tell whether he's sending a how or a baker. Bosky! Come up here! Forget the flags. Use a searchlight. Get going. He's just itching to put somebody on report this morning. Yes, sir. Bosky, where are you going? Why didn't you report directly to me? What are you doing aboard? I come after some batteries for the beach party transmitter. But that's a job for a radio man. You were supposed to remain on the beach to receive my signals. You deserted your post. Now, exactly why did you come aboard? Mitchell. Sir, Mr. O'Banion ordered me to get them batteries. Mr. O'Banion is in command of the beach party. I'm in the beach party and do what Mr. O'Banion tells me to do, sir. But I'm the signal officer. I'm the signal officer. Bosky! You come back here. How dare you walk away from me like that? Why did you do it? Answer me! Mr. Twitchell, sir. If I stayed here when you talked to me like that, I'd just have to clobber you. So to keep from doing it, I walked away. But I'm an officer. I'm your superior officer. You disregarded me! You order me to stay, and I'll stay here as long as you tell me to stay here, Mr. Twitchell. Sir. So, what's left of these two platoons of infantry are cut off about here, near the tip of Wolchi Island. If they're not rescued by dawn, they'll be wiped out by the Japanese. The chart shows this reef between the lagoon and the island. But the captain thinks there's a passage somewhere, wide enough for a pea boat to get through. Our job is to find it and then rescue the troops. Now, who'll volunteer? It's a very simple job, gentlemen. If it's so simple, why don't you go? Why, I... Gentlemen, the Army needs a hand. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'll inform the captain. And I'll get a flag and wave it a little. I don't think that's funny. Look, I don't think it's funny, those guys being trapped. It's like Quigley. I wanted to belt him in the mouth the first time I ever saw him. He's trying. Give him a break. The teacup admirals had nothing but good breaks. It's time he found out it takes more than a crease in his pants and a toothpaste to add smile to pull his weight with grown men. Mr. Kruger, you're elected. We'll take four boats and rendezvous with a P-boat from the flagship for instructions. You'll find it somewhere this side of the reef. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Oh, and the captain said you're to take orders from the senior officer present, regardless of service. Yes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll fix you some sandwiches to take along. Fine. No use dying in an empty stomach. Good luck to you, Kruger. Jim. Good luck. Good luck, Kruger. Good luck. Good luck, Kruger. Commander. Why wouldn't the captain let me go? He didn't say. I'd like to speak to him. Go right ahead.
tell you something. I'd like very much to go myself, but I can't. I need you, so you can't. I'll tell you something else. Commander Quigley also wanted to go. He volunteered immediately. Yes, Mr. McDougal, our executive officer may well be growing into his stripes. Join you in a cup of coffee, Commander? I like that very much, Mr. McDougal. Major Scott, don't you understand? There's a reef between us and that island. And these boats are sure to get hung up on it. Come daylight, they'll be sitting ducks for the Japs. Well, you're the Navy. I can't order you in. But somewhere on that beach are some guys that need help. About where do you think we can find your people, Major Scott? You mean you'll try for them? That's what we're here for. Are you crazy, Kruger? I just told you, there's no passage through that reef. My skipper thinks there is, sir. Okay, if I come with you? I was told to take orders from the senior officer present, Army or Navy. That's you, isn't it, sir? That's me, mister. Climb aboard. You Belinda people. You're all wise guys. I got a silver star at too that says you won't make it. Lieutenant, please notify my regimental headquarters that we're going to try. Yes, sir. Stay close together in column. Keep me in sight. And keep blacked out. Pass the word. I'll take a slow along the reef, will you? Okay, Eddie, lower the ramp. Blanchard? Yeah, you, Major Scott? Right. Man, you don't know. We were cut clean off. Runners never got back. Japs everywhere. Wasn't so bad when they charged. But... Sure, sure. Let's go now. Get your men in the boats, huh? Anchors away is going to be my personal hymn from now on. Come on, fellas. Into the boats. Let's go, man. On the double.
All you'll have left to remember this by will be your Purple Heart. You've been hurt worse in football games. Yeah, I sure have. You know, I wanted to be a football player. My feet just couldn't take those shoes. Always felt like the, the cleats were on the inside. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. That's funny. I didn't want to play football. I wanted to be a doctor. It's the truth. Hot flash in high school, so... When I got to college, everybody pressured me into going out for the team. Well, there just aren't enough hours to play football and study medicine at the same time. I guess not. I've been thinking, though. When this war is over, I'm going back to Cal. And this time, no football. You see, Doc, you're a bad influence. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Kruger. Thank you, sir. You're all a credit to the Belinda. Ship's coming in. Yes, pass. Study your recognition manual. You're on hack until you've drawn 25 freehand silhouettes of F6Fs. While you're doing it, remember that you advised me to shoot down Americans. No gunnery discipline at all on those ships. Almost started an epidemic. Boats from the Sandoval's out to pick up that flyer. He doesn't seem hurt. I don't envy the crew that has to pick him up. He's going to be the maddest pilot in the United States Navy. Six more men on report. All for fighting amongst themselves. Sure. Thank you, sir. This keeps up. We'll have the whole crew on report. Yes, I know. Ever since the men found out the routing was changed from Numia to Guadalcanal, they've been... Well, sir, they were disappointed. So was I. Sir, I checked with Island Command. We can have their athletic field from 1 to 4 tomorrow. The chaplain's busy stirring up interest in a baseball game. Mr. Jackson found out anything about our mail yet? He's checking on it. Beer and Coke? Well, the chaplain thought he should have some for the younger men. Surprised we still have any younger men after what they've been through. So ordered, Commander. Liberty for all hands on Guadalcanal tomorrow. Yes, sir. Liberty on Guadalcanal. That's as juicy as getting to New York and spending your leave in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And I thought we was going to New Caledonia. To New Mia. The Navy figures were too young to be exposed to those French Danes. I like to visit historical places. 
Don't you ever wash. This garbage grinder is ready for salt water. Well, and you the don't understand. I, I wash. Come on, you're going to have to All right, knock it off. Come on. Captain. Sir, all of our mail is at Numia. We haven't had mail for weeks now, and my wife is going to have a baby. Believe me, sir, the men are very riled up about it. The baby? No, sir. No, sir. I mean the mail, sir. I know what you mean, Mr. Jackson. Send a signal to the fleet post office. Request that the mail be forwarded to our next anchorage. Yes, sir. Plans for the next operation have arrived, sir. Liberty on Guadalcanal. Fine lot of combat efficiency that's going to build back into my crew. Sir? Nothing. Nothing. Let's look at those operational plans. Ah, if this was Aussie Blue, I'd be feeling it. Nah. Do we go to Australia where they got good beer and pretty women? Or New Caledonia, where they got pretty French women? Ah. Warm 3.2. No dames, no mail, no nothing. Nothing! Nothing. Sailing on a lousy Pacific on a lousy ship. With a bunch of creeps like Sack Time Riley. Huh? What's the matter? Bad enough to open off a board ship. Don't go doing it here. What's eating you? If it wasn't so warm, I'd work you over. You too, if you weren't such a run. Don't let that stop you. Look. You'd think it was a World Series. Strike one. Strike two. Strike. Strike. Tap. Are you blind? That last ball almost took my head off. Strike two, old Banyan. If that was a strike, I'll eat it. If you don't stop arguing every time you come up to bat, I'm going to toss you right out of the game. Just one more word and out you go. Now play ball. Well, that's a Protestant for you. See, that's my coconut. Your coconut, it's mine. I said it's my coconut. Get in front of your own. Mr. Twitchell, sir, oh, I'm really You're sorry, sir. You're under arrest for striking an officer. Uh, no, that get away from uh, me. Get away up. from me. What did you say? What did you get say? Get off my foot. No. What do you think you're doing? I saw you do that. I saw you, you do that. You got to go wrong, Mr. Twitchell. What are you doing? What are you doing? Riley. Riley. Give it to him. Bring it up. Bring it up. Mr. McDougal. Mr. McDougal. I... What's going on here? You saw it, Mr. McDougal. You're a witness. He hit me. He struck an officer. He was in on it, too. Mr. McDougal, I... All right, knock it off. Knock it off. Did anybody see exactly what happened here? Uh, I saw the whole thing, sir. How could you see it? You were busy catching. Well, it was uh, while I was taking off my mask. I just happened to look up, and I saw these two white hats, and they were wrestling over a coconut. All in fun, sir, and... Uh, Mr. Twitchell evidently thought they were fighting, and uh, when he went to step between them, he stumbled over a coconut and fell and hit his head on that tree. No, nobody punched him, nobody laid a hand on him, sir. It's all a pack of lies, lies. I'll get witnesses. You'll all pay for this. I'll put everybody on report for this. You'll see. You'll see. All right, break it up. Back to your game. Any noticeable good effects from our afternoon on the beach? Well, mostly bruises, as far as I can see, sir. Now, Mr. Twistrell's report about his mouse would indicate a riot had taken place. I've been able to secure a replacement for Twitchell. 
Cut orders relieving him from duty and send him ashore for further assignment. Yes, sir. You want to see me, Captain? Oh, yes, talk, sir. Come in, sit down. Commander, I want him off the ship tonight. Tonight, sir? But... Aye, aye, sir. Sit down. Coffee? Sir? Sure. Two coffees. My compliments on procuring that fine hardwood from the Navy sawmill ashore. How much did you get? Uh, ten feet, sir. I mean, ten feet. What, sir? I asked how much hardwood did you get? Oh, ten thousand board feet, sir. It's almost enough to repair every landing craft in the division. Well, sir, a little extra always comes in handy for trading purposes. It ain't to... No. Well, it ain't as though there wasn't plenty of it. Island's lousy with it, sir. Look here. Nice little boat, huh? Yes, sir, it is. Could you build a boat like that? Yes, sir. If I had the plans, I could. It's oh, a full description, all the specifications. Could you build it from those? Yes, sir, I could. Good. Do so. Huh? Take that along and start building my sailboat. I mean, tonight, sir? Right now, a board ship, sir? You're capable of building it and getting our landing craft repaired at the same time. You've ample materials. I want it completed at the earliest possible date. Use all the men you need to accomplish it, understand? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, your coffee. Oh, no. Thank you, sir. making the new hinges for the ramp on boat nine? I only got two hands, Mr. Kruger. This lousy jewelry for the captain's crummy sailboat takes priority over everything. you think it was some kind of new secret weapon. Oh, will you try to make the hinges, too? Yes, sir. You know what I'd like to do with these credit cleats? Mount him in the seat of the captain's pants. Here we go again. You're in charge of the deck department. Our boat repairs your responsibility or not. And my responsibility, so? What are we making the landings at Palau with? Our VPs or the captain's sloop? Just quit beefing to me about it. But you got twice as many people working on that crummy sailboat as on our landing craft. You think I like it? You think it's my idea? Dave, you're pretty close to the old man. What do you make of this deal? I just don't understand it. I know the old man can be stubborn as a bull, but up to now he's always been for the ship. Well, his ship is looking another D-Day right in the eye. And only half of his boats are ready for it. That's the last, absolutely the last red ink I can find. What are you doing? Darn canvas. What does it look like we're doing, you stupid? Oh, hello, Chief. And why are you doing it? Captain wants red sails on a sailboat, that's why. Go on up, I want to show you something. Feast your eyes on that. Beautiful lines, eh? I call her the Albatross. She's a real beauty, sir. Ah, she'll make a little dandy for me to sail when we're in some snug anchorage. Meantime, we'll keep her stowed in the mic boat. She's ready to launch, right, Mr. Fraser? I hope our VPs will be as ready to launch. They will be. I knew my crew would... I assumed you, of all the officers aboard, would most understand my motives for having this sailboat constructed. I was mistaken, Mr. Fraser. What's that supposed to mean? You're no veteran, not really. You just put in a lot of time in this Navy. Now look, McDougal. You look. You're closer to the crew than any other officer aboard, yet you're blind to what's been happening to them. The men have been coming unglued from too many months at sea. They'd lost their combat efficiency. 
They needed something to fix their hate on so that they'd stop fighting among themselves. The captain gave it to them, himself and the sailboat. You were worried about the boats being ready. They'll be ready, mister. But more important, the crew will be ready. You don't get those four strides for nothing, do you? I bet you every ship in the Navy is anchored right here at the Admiralty. That PA over there, number 22, she's really bent places. Holy cats, a sailboat? Ready about? Let's take her home. See that admiral over there? He's about to bust with envy. Yeah, not a skipper anchored here that ain't jealous of the albatross. The old man really knows how to handle her, don't he? He can sail a shingle in a hurricane. Well, she didn't sink. She sails pretty well. Thank you, sir. Stay her hand now and treat her gently when you hoist her aboard. See that she's waved dry. Be sure to polish up her brass. Would you mind if we took her aboard at hatch number five, sir? Affirmative. Bring her alongside green nine. She's a real pretty sight scudding before the wind, Captain. Looks like she handles just fine. I want a boat alongside in ten minutes. Amanda Quigley and I are going ashore to attend an operations meeting. Aye, aye, sir. Well, Captain. Sir, I've been waiting to tell you. It's in Hollandia now. Our mail, sir. Didn't you instruct the post office people to forward everything here and leave it in the admiralties for us to pick up? Yes, sir, I did. But, sir, they even showed me the top secret list which tells where every ship is. That list shows that the Belinda is anchored off Landia. They even sent our mail down there by air to be sure we'd get it. Twenty-two bags of stuff. Well, perhaps they'll fly it back. Well, she could have had it by now and I don't even know it. Sir, why are we always anchoring in the wrong place? I'll see what I can do about it. Watch the mooring line, sir. Captain! Get the ladder. We showed him up and took him to his cabin. He's under sedation. He'll sleep for a while, huh? Thanks. How serious is it? No skull fracture, but there's undoubtedly a concussion. Just how serious, we can't be sure. Not for some time, at least. But knowing him as I think I do, I'll lay odds he'll skipper his ship all the way to late. Paravanes, stream your paravanes. Stream on paravanes, whatever they are. What's that thing for? It's supposed to deflect mines. Cuts them loose, they float to the surface, and we detonate them with rifle fire. You mean we send them to a minefield now? Oh, my ear come back. Past control point X-ray, Captain. Now 34 miles south of our beach at Tacloma. How's our timing? Three minutes ahead of schedule, sir, but ebb tide's stronger than predicted and the currents are very confused. Tides and currents have always been here. The mines haven't. Mine foul and starboard paravane! Mine foul and starboard paravane! Chief Jorgensen reports mine found in sovereign paravane, sir. Right, 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 right,
Form the flagship and ship's astern. Alert the engine room and damage control. Mine fouled and starboard paravane. Engine room, damage control. Mine fouled and starboard paravane. All damage control parties. Stand by with shores firefighting equipment. All troops. All troops will move immediately from starboard side of midship. Clear the starboard side. Can't carry on any further. We'll run into the next column. Chief told us in reports he still can't see the mines. We can't lie here, Captain. We're being set down on it faster every minute. Back the ship. My eyes. All back full. What's the captain doing? That mine's gonna slam into his midships. Standing by. Captain wants Alvik on the bridge. Now right full rudder. Right full rudder. Radar range to columns on either side. Alvik, yes, sir. That's supposed to be the best rifle shot on this ship. Get up on the forecastle and prove it. I could prove it quicker with a 20 millimeter, sir. We also get ricochets into some other ship and start a trigger-happy crew shooting at us. Take off. Aye, aye, sir. All stop! All stop, sir! Dougal. Yes, sir? You'll hold it like this for five minutes. Yes, sir, I can hold it. Check the focus and let me know the minute Alvy gets there. Folks, the captain wants to know when Alvy gets there. I can see it, captain. Already in the focus, sir. Open fire. Open fire. It's got to hit one of the horns. Just plugging it full of holes won't do any good. Basket full to unknown ship, violating gunfire restriction plan. Cease fire immediately. Out. Who's basket full? Commander First LST Squadron, sir. 57.7.1. This is Joe Masterson, class of 26. He's junior to me. Basket full, this is Tango. Stick around, Stu. You ain't seen nothing yet. He's hit it twice now, sir. One of the horns? I couldn't tell. Maybe it's a dud. So you're the big rabbit hunter from Wyoming. Huh. You ain't any better at shooting rabbits than you are at that mine out there. When you get home, you're gonna starve to death. If you get home. All right, knock it off up there. Guard. Put the Belinda back on course, distance to the guide, Mr. McDougal. Aye, sir. Commander, troops can resume movement to their debark stations. Aye, sir. I thought that crack in the head would have slowed him down a bit, but he's sharp as a needle tonight. Sure is. Troops resume movement to debark stations. All troops resume movement to debark stations. It's too messed, sir. Always goes by the book. Sorry, no. Kamikaze has got another escort carrier this morning. Mm -hmm. Japanese keep this up and I'm transferring to the infantry. Hey, Dave. Yeah? I hear the captain brought a passenger aboard from Takloven. A female. Is that true? Yep. A Red Cross girl? Nurse, maybe. <laughs> a monkey? Yeah, and a female, too. Gentlemen, this is Chipchi. Friend of the captain's going to share his cabin from now on. What's the captain doing? Turning the ship into a zoo? Chipchi will provide companionship for the captain. 
make the brutal loneliness of command a little more bearable. Loneliness? Are you kidding? His own pantry? His own stewards? Doing what he likes, when he likes? I could stand a lot of that kind of loneliness myself. Because you've never had it. Command's one of the loneliest jobs in the world. Eating alone most of the time. Living from the bridge, the chart room, to an empty cabin. It wouldn't be so lonesome if you were a little more sociable. He can't be sociable. Not aboard his own ship. No captain can. If he becomes too friendly, he may start relying on friendship instead of his own judgment. At that moment, he's no longer a good captain. Well, just promise you'll give me a warning toot on the whistle the day he turns the con over to the monkey. I want time to jump overboard. <laughs> hey, fellas! Here comes the mail! Hey, hey let's go. What's the picture tonight? Same as last night, sir. In this one, she's six months pregnant. Here, she writes the doctor said she might have twins. In this one, she's waiting for her brother to drive her to the hospital. This last one is from her mother. It says Alice and children are doing fine. Children? How many and what are they, boys or girls? Holy mackerel. Too hippie. Hippie? She's built like a battleship. I must have seen it at least six times. I guess I'll skip it tonight. Excuse me, gentlemen. Excuse me, McDougal. My darling, this has been such a special day for me. I want to share it with you. It began with my getting six wonderful letters from you. I read each one a dozen times, then pasted them in the scrapbook. When Robbie grows up, he'll have them all. The eyewitness report of the war his father fought through in the Pacific. I don't know what one thing set me to dreaming. Your picture, I guess. But I got to wondering if you remember the same things I do about our life together. Like the first time I saw you, and the first time you saw me. You were being lectured by Mr. Curlin about something, but stared at me so hard I typed the same line over again four times. <laughs> Remember how fussed I got? And then you asked me for a date, and I said yes. But you didn't even try to kiss me goodnight when you brought me home. Kept wishing you would so I could prove how ladylike I was by refusing. I, uh... I want to thank you for going out with me tonight. I enjoyed the dinner and show very much, Captain. I wish you'd stop calling me Captain. My, my name's David. Uh, Dave, if you like. Uh, maybe we could go out again tomorrow night. Well, if you want to. I do. Uh, same time. Okay. Good night, meeting. Good night, Dave. I never wanted to be kissed so bad in my whole life. But you didn't even try. <laughs> and you a sailor to boot. In a way, I was glad, though, because it proved you respected me. At least until our second date. Oh, Dave. D Dave. Mm? Dave. 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 Dave, stop now. Stop. Stop. Dave. Stop. Dave. Please. Dave. Please. No, no, honey, not out here. Please. Please, not inside. Inside, huh? No. No, not inside either. You've got to stop, Dave. 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 <laughs> and 
And finally, I came to know I wasn't just another girl in another port when you proposed to me. It was at the beach, and you were so serious, and I loved you so much. Oh. Oh, look, honey, you've got to think about it, not just emotionally, but mentally. It's not easy to be the wife of a sailor. Well, it's not easy to be a wife, period. I love you, and I want to marry you, but I want you to know what you're getting into. I know. Do you? Oh, look, I may be away for weeks at a time. Oh, but those homecomings. But, um... Uh... I'll think about it if you want me to. I'd done my thinking months before, so we were married the next day. You were away for weeks at a time. But all of those homecomings... That's, uh, all of them, huh? Every square inch. <laughs> He's nice. Nice? He's beautiful. He looks a little like Winston Churchill. All new babies look like Winston Churchill. Yeah. yeah. Each time you came home from a voyage, you'd bring gifts like no wife in the world ever got. That Sunday when you'd come back from your last trip to the Orient, I'll never forget that. My hair's too short and... Well, my eyes are jet pleasy at all. Oh, you look beautiful in it. Even Robbie approves, see? We interrupt this program for a news flash. Pearl Harbor has been bombed and strafed by Japanese carrier planes. The fleet has suffered heavy casualties. The number of American soldiers and sailors killed in this sneak attack is still unknown. But it's feared it will be very high. Stand by, please, for further reports. <laughs> I spend my sunsets looking out at the vast Pacific. Every evening I stand on the cliff below our home and try to send my love across the water to you. Does that sound silly? I don't care. You're out there somewhere and I like to believe that you can feel the love reaching from me to you. So please be careful, my darling. And never forget, you have two people who adore you to come home to. All my love, Nadine. Turn around. All right, now face me, heels together. Really hurt, huh? All the time, Doc. I soaked them in salt water, like you said. Rubbed them good, and they wore heavy socks. And they still hurt something awful. Flattest feet I ever saw. You recommended sending Gilbert Hubert, seaman second class, to Naval Hospital Guam, where the services of a chiropodist are available. That's right, Captain. We can't help him here. How long would he be away? Oh, about two weeks, in. Oh, it's too long. We'll be on our way before he get back to the ship. Is it a critical condition? No, but his feet really require expert attention, sir. He needs special shoes. I believe you, Dr. Flynn, but he'll have to wait. Hubert is not military and he's not sanitary, but he's important to the safety of the ship. Hubert's the only man aboard who likes to grind garbage. He's the only man who can be trusted to grind it properly day after day. Request denied. His feet will have to sweat out the next beachhead before I part with him. Very good, Jeff. Congratulations, Commander. We'll proceed immediately to Pearl Harbor. Assume command of the APA Pika. My own command. You've earned it. What's more important, you're ready for it. Captain, I... 
Have a yeoman cut orders turning over executive officer duties to McDougal and assign Randall as navigator. Aye, aye, sir. Mm -hmm. I'll Mr. Belinda. And you, sir. I... I kind of grew up on this ship, serving under you. I guess I made a mistake about him. He turned out all right. I managed a couple of mistakes aboard this ship. Nobody makes mistakes on my ship, Mr. Fraser. Not serious ones. This next one is it. We're going right into the Japs' backyard and take it away from them. Yes, sir. Only trouble is, they know we're coming. Huh? They must, Captain. When I was in Tacloban yesterday, a Filipino boy selling mangoes asked me if I was going to Okinawa with everybody else. <laughs> There's no such thing as a real secret. I'll tell you one. They tried twice to take you away from me and give you your own command. I've blocked it each time. You're entitled to your own ship. You should have had one from the beginning. But I couldn't let you go. I thought no man was indispensable in this Navy, sir. No man is... I kept you because you were important to the Belinda. You're stubborn, you're proud, and a lot of the time I hate your guts, but you really love the ship. What's that got to do with it? Everything. Old Beachhead Belinda is, well, she's more than just another APA to you and me. To you? You tried to make her a means to an end, to earn your command of a cruiser. I can remember you calling her a waddling tub and hating every rivet in her. That's right, I did. Money. Quigley moved on to his own command. I could have requested a cruiser and gotten it this time. It just never occurred to me. But it occurred to you to keep me from getting a ship of my own. I gave you my reasons why. Since we're speaking frankly, sir, your reasons stink. I have other reasons. I'm getting tired. There are times when I... Maybe I should have taken more leave after Guadalcanal, after that fouled up mess in North Africa. Man can take just so much, I guess. I keep getting those headaches. It nearly blinds me. McDougal, I'll recommend you for your own command after this next operation is over. In the meantime, it's your duty to stick by the Belinda and me. I've always tried to do my duty, sir. I love this sailboat, too. day, eh, Pappy? Yeah, this whole week at Okinawa's been weird, Padre. Just like dry run. No shoot from the shore, no kamikaze. It just ain't natural. Will you stop watching the clouds and watch what you're doing? I was listening to Tokyo Rose after supper. She says they got their suicide planes all lined up. Ready to sink every ship we got. Propaganda, Pappy. She's just trying to scare us. You know something? She's doing it, too. I ordered the transports to sea for the night. Could be a busy one. Cruisers and destroyers on the picket line are still holding off the kamikazes, but some of them are bound to break through eventually. Bogies many, bearing 055, 20 miles, closing. Flash, flash, take necessary deployment action and evasive maneuvers. Out. They'll be over our screen any minute. Watch for firing out there. Mr. Randall. Yes, sir? 
Don't let the lookouts get excited and get out of sector. What is it, McDougal? We haven't finished unloading the wounded out of that LCM from the Lattimore, sir. Well, get aft and hurry them up. Aye, sir. I'll give you a hand, Dave. Let me have a hand, Mike. Yes, sir. Now, hear this. This is the captain speaking. In a couple of minutes or less, you're going to get the chance of your lives to do some shooting. A swarm of kamikazes is coming in, hell-bent on getting the transports. They're not going to get old Beachhead Belinda, if you keep your heads and carry out my orders. Now listen, men. All you have to do is obey orders and do as you were trained to do. Loaders, load. Do not look around the sky. Pointers, point. Trainers, train. Do it easy, just like a dry run, and do it fast. Use your heads, your experience, and your training. That is all. Carry on, and good hunting. Pat, you've got to get these people undercover fast. No use jerking their arms and legs off. they got to tough it up now. Get those men out of that LCM right away. we got to get moving. Many kamikazes, Dave? More than we've ever seen before, Padre. Get that hatch covered. On the double. All right, Dokes, get those hatch covers on as soon as you can. Engine's ready to answer bell, sir. Standard speed set 15 knots. I count at least 20 of them. Ray 3, closing rapidly on transport area. 20 to 25 planes. No cap in vicinity. Out. LCM clear, Captain. Ahead, one third. Ahead, one third, sir. Right, full rudder. Right, full rudder, sir. Take the con. Aye, sir. Keep in contact with me by headphones. Going up to control and knock down some of those divine wind boys before they get a chance to commit suicide. and maybe more inside the sick bay. And that man on the table. What about Dr. Flynn and the Padre? Both of them. Michael Banyan, too. And the fire's almost out. After starboard deck house demolished, watertight integrity in all but number five hatch. Casualties, 17 of the wounded killed by crash, plus two more who died of burns. Seven of our own crew killed, including Dr. Flynn, Chaplain Hughes, and Michael Banyan. Is it all me to go? No, sir. The Albatross, Captain, she was... Completely demolished and burned. 
and Chip G was killed. Flash red control yellow. Five strong raids closing the transport area from all sides. Now inside the cap and closing. Out. True. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. I may join you in control, but my intentions are to remain here and con the ship at high speed. Keep the guns concentrating on planes closing. Never mind the wolf packs out on the rim. There they come, Captain. be distracted by the fire. Leave that to Fraser and damage control until we beat off this attack. You keep watching here, I'll take the starboard side. Aye, sir. You mustn't let him get to us again. She can't take anymore. Hard left. Hard left, I say! Hard left, sir! Get away from my ship! Get your frozen plane away from my ship! Give me a hand here. Help me get him down to this cabin. Get one of the doctors. Aye, aye, sir. The doctor will be here in a minute, sir. I've got to get up to the bridge, Captain. I'll rest my eyes. If the porthole will be open, you can speak to me at any time. I'll be awake.
but I left him in his cabin. He's not there, Jay. Chief Ryan just reported the captain's down number four hole. He thinks the doctor better get down there. Jim, can you take the car? I think so, Dave, sure. Stay on this course. It'll take us to the Karama Reto. That's an island group about 15 miles southwest of Okinawa. If we can get her in there, we've got a chance to save her. I'm going below to survey damage. Give me a toot on the whistle if the kamikazes show up again. Right, Dave. Dr. Bell's waiting for him in surgery, sir. Nobody can work down there. Kind of silly trying to fight fire down here when we're all going to be drowned any minute. That fracture goes at least 10 feet below what you can see. We had it shored up twice. The water pressure's too strong. With the smoke, the men can't stay down there for a third try. Are the pumps working? Yeah, but at the rate we're flooding, it's like trying to bail her out with a tin cup. You might as well face it, sir. We're sinking. How about the only thing left to try is an air bubble? Huh? Cover the hatch with canvas, tar it down. We pump air under it so the pressure will force the water back out through the fracture. Just keep us floating. Well, let's do it. We can't, sir. The forward air compressor's busted. We haven't got enough air hose to reach from the other one to here. It's in the aft boat repair shop. Yeah, that's the rub. Well, let's move that compressor down here. You crazy, Pappy? Weighs more than a ton. Cargo booms for this hole are busted. Since you're not going to manhandle it down here. If you could just get it to the hatch, have we got enough hose to reach from there to here? Just about, but moving that compressor. It just can't be done, sir. Well, we won't know unless we try. Come on, about 80, you guys. With me. Get me some more CO2. This one's about empty. 20 millimeter ammo fell through a hole, burning the overhead. You fool, you can't go back in there. That ammo will blast you to bits. This is my garbage room. They ain't gonna burn my garbage grinder. She works. By golly, she still works. Listen to that. Kamikazes. Where are they? No kamikazes, Dave. Chief Targetson reported number four hole has cracked open more. He thinks she's breaking her back. I thought you'd want to know. She can't sink. Can't let her sink. Doc Bell's seen Hawks. The captain's still alive, but that's about all I can say for him. Seventeen degree list. She'd shifted back. Nothing could have kept her from capsizing. I'm going to damage control to check with Fraser. I'm going below for another look at that hold. We gotta keep this list. You're telling me. If we don't, she'll roll like a log. I can't pump out any more double bottoms. She'll capsize for sure. Dave, I don't think we're gonna be able to save her anyway. Even if we build up an air bubble. How are we gonna get that brute of a compressor moved from the fantail to the number four hatch in time to do it? In the meantime, I got a small problem with water flooding the shaft alley. I'll meet you in number four hold. Ration stored in the life rafts? Together, you jug heads, together. You ain't gonna move nothing one at a time. I tell you, it'd be better if You I... ain't telling me nothing. I'm telling you. Now grab hold. Put your guts in it. All your guts. One, two, heave. <laughs> one, two, heave. One, two, heave. One, two, heave. One, two, heave! Ah! 
Come on now, she's starting to go. Get with it. Let's have it. One, two, heave. One, two, heave. goes again, sir. A couple of them frames let go will sink like a rock. It couldn't be a frame. Shell plating makes a terrific noise when it snaps. It's probably just the skin of the ship. I gotta find out just how hurt she is. Washed right out to sea through that hole in the side. Shut up. Starboard side's okay. If she was going to crack apart, there'd be some signs of it there. Now to see what the plane did to us. Still a bulldozer and a couple of trucks down there. That guy could get caught under him and drown. Just leave me alone for a second. She's cracked all the way down. Our only chance was with the compressor. Now walk her around, walk her around, you'll grab her. Hold it. Steady. That's got it. All right, guys. Higher down. Bear a hand with that job there. We're ready to start building the air bubble in this bucket. What took you so long, Pappy? Put the rest of those hatch covers down. Stand by with the canvas and tar. Bring up the rest of that shoring timber. All right, now, bear a hand. Oh, I'm fine, Mr. McDougall. Come on, better let the doctors check you out. Oh, they got enough to do with the wounded. I'll be all right, sir. I ain't near as ruptured as a ship. We should make the Coronaretto in a few hours, sir. Once we reach there, we can pump her out, patch her with cement, and signal for a tow to a repair dock. If any kamikaze should jump us there, we'll at least have a chance to beach her. Is he hearing anything of what I'm saying? I doubt it. Randall, what is it? Engine room has just reported the propeller shaft is snapped. Broke off at the main bearing. I'll, I'll be right there. 
propeller shaft's gone. That's done it. Children. Children. Children help the mother. Dr. Fraser, he's down in the engine room. There's nothing that can be done. You want me to start moving the wounded out so we can get him into the life raft and whatever boats we got left? Now hear this. This is McDougal speaking. Our propeller shaft is broken and the ship is without power. At this moment, we're a helpless, drifting hulk. But we're still afloat and we can still save our ship. We're going to hoist out what boats we have left and tow the Belinda to safety. All deck divisions, break out mooring lines for towing. Boat crews, Man your boats! the engines in every boat. That's all we can do. You know how long it took to hoist out the boats? Eleven minutes, Dave. Only eleven minutes. It's not remarkable, Mr. Randall. Not for Captain Jeb Hawk's crew. Good evening, Captain. I wonder if you would please lie down so I can check you over, sir. Where is Dr. Fleck? He will prescribe for me. I don't mean to question your ability, sir. Dr. Flynn is my doctor. Dr. Flynn was killed, sir. He was... Please, Captain. Sir, I'd like to have a look at my ship. Die in the war, it doesn't matter where.
I guess he couldn't die until he knew his ship was safe. He started saving her the morning he came aboard. All of us are better than we ever thought we could be because of what he gave us. And we'll go home again because of him.